This week's edition of NJBIA's Minding Your Business is brought to you in part by AT&T, helping family, friends, and neighbors connect in meaningful ways every day. From the first phone call 140 years ago to mobile video streaming today, AT&T innovates to improve lives. And by New Jersey Business Magazine, providing the critical information needs for New Jersey's business community for more than 65 years. Welcome to NJBIA's Minding Your Business. I'm your host, Bob Considine. Well, manufacturing has a storied history here in New Jersey. And here to talk about the current state of manufacturing in New Jersey and where it's going, it's John Kennedy, CEO of the New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program. John, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. All right. So, John, you know, I know a lot of our viewers, a lot of our members are familiar with you, but for those who don't know, what is a manufacturing extension program? What is its role and what is its uh, mission? Well, it's interesting because it's been nine years of my life now and it seems to be longer than that. <laughs> uh, but actually, uh, when I owned my manufacturing company and my engineering company in New Jersey, I knew nothing of the program. Okay. It, it's a national program. It's every state in Puerto Rico has a MEP. And NJMEP has been ours for close to 30 years now. Okay. And our mission's simple. Work with the 11,000 plus manufacturers in New Jersey and help them in any way possible. Right. Okay, so um, you mentioned those MEPs, all 51 of them around the country, do they, do they work together? Collaborate? It depends on what, uh, during COVID, certainly. Uh, okay. But we do work together on a lot of things. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Right. Um, so we learn from each other and we, you know, when companies are repeated in different states, mm -hmm. it's a great option to be able to call the guys in Ohio and say, hey, this company needs help on Lean Six Sigma. Right. <laughs> and, and not have to worry that it's going to be handled poorly. Right. That's the first time that's ever been mentioned on the show, by the way. Lean Six Sigma? Yes, it is. Yes. And probably the last, but we'll see. Uh, so, John, with MEP, do they advise uh, manufacturing companies to? What are, what are the, some of the things you help them with? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, the four pillars as we look at it for right. our, you know, is we assess companies. We go in and we do a full assessment of them, business and technical. Uh, financial, everything, and we dig dig deep uh, because we got to know where their issues are. After that, we do consulting work. Okay. You know, we also do a lot of training and education in plant, as well as workforce development. Sometimes working with you guys, right. uh, you know, in regards to pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships. And the last thing we do, and thank God for NJBIA, yeah. we advocate. Right. I'm an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you do advocate. There's a difference between lobbying and advocating. No, yeah. Lobbying, I don't know much about, right. but advocating for my industry, I'm okay. All right. So you mentioned nine years of, uh, as your role as the um, CEO of NJMEP. What have you found in that time frame? It's a grandiose question. What have you found? What has improved and what is still a major challenge in manufacturing in New Jersey? Well, I'll tell you, I think we're we, meaning the industry, is better well known. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that's part and parcel for a lot of things. You know, I do think that, uh, you know, NJMEP has helped in that regard. So our branding and our push, uh, BIA, in your background, has helped us a lot. But I also think that there's been a lot of discussion based upon a myriad of situations. The tariffs. Yeah. That, you know, all of a sudden, supply chain, what's going on? COVID yeah. changed the mindset, too. And I think that there's a lot less people saying, I didn't think there was any manufacturing in New Jersey. Yeah, I, I, I read a quote. You said, um, it's not about bringing manufacturing back to New Jersey. It's, it's here. It's, it's let's use it better and let's use it more. Is that basically your credo? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, when we talk about reshoring, what are we talking about? Mm. Are we talking about companies coming back? Well, 11,000 plus didn't leave. 
Uh, so they're doing good stuff. Uh, do we want some more companies to come back? Certainly, but let's let's understand our own supply chain and how we can use them better, not only for New Jersey, but for the nation. Right. You mentioned uh, COVID-19 uh, in terms of manufacturing, both as a state and as, and as a country. Did we have adequate supply uh, to answer COVID-19's call over the past year? Well, I don't think anybody did. Okay. But I certainly know that the U.S. and New Jersey didn't. And part of that was the unknown. You know, let's talk PPE for a second, right? Yeah. Well, we found in digging through our our supply chain database that we have, which has over 9,000 companies in it, uh, we found that there was close to 300 companies that did some type of PPE. Mm-hmm. And 300 companies in New Jersey, in New Jersey, okay. in New Jersey okay. that did something, right. whether it was masks or gowns or gloves, components, right. gloves, yeah. components for ventilators, all sorts of stuff. And I didn't know that. And maybe I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, but my team did a really Rob Stramauer, for one, who's our COO, did yeah. a phenomenal job putting that all together. That also allowed us to speak to other states and other MEPs and say, hey, we can make the materials for the gowns. Who do you have that can take it from there? Okay. And that was a big question to have. So I don't think we were prepared, but let's, let's be honest. You know, I read during the, that 95% of our blood pressure medicine is made in China. Right. Now you can argue China good, bad, or anything, I don't care. Mm-hmm. But as a business person, Single sourcing, Single sourcing a component is is not good. Not good. And we did it. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about New Jersey's COVID-19 response. I felt like the governor did a good job in terms of uh, maintaining that all uh, manufacturers were essential, uh, which we advised on. Um, and also kept the, did it not keep the supply chain open here in New Jersey? Very much. Uh, I, you know, kudos to Governor, Governor Murphy on that regard. So, you know, he he listened to BIA, yeah. MEP, but he also paid attention to what was happening in other states. Mm-hmm. A lot of other states shut it all down. Right. Uh, other, some other states shut down partially, you know, and, you know, they shut down packaging and containers and things. And I don't know about you, Bob, but when was the last time you went in to buy a loaf of bread and it was sitting there without a package on it? (laughs) Or you went into CVS and there was no container or label on it. Right. That's a supply chain. That's a supply chain, right. And I think we did it right in New Jersey uh, in that regards. And actually, in some cases, it helped our manufacturers because it expanded their ability to help other, other states and expand their business. Right. So, you know, I think we did okay in that. Right. I'll ask one more grandiose question. You could try to pare it down. Um, in terms of New Jersey's investment in manufacturing, where do you see that? Do you think we're, we're doing a good job, a better job, we could do better, uh, do even more? What's your position on that? I think we're improving. Okay. I mean, I do. Uh, you know, uh, I've been in this industry my whole, after college, my whole adult life, well, even before I was, I worked in a machine shop, you know, yeah. and things of that to de- earn money for college. Right. But I think we're doing a better job. And, you know, it is, again, a team effort. But I do think that people are listening to us. Mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, Governor Murphy and, and the DOL have stepped up in regards to some of the trainings, the apprenticeships and, and so on. I think that the Manufacturing Caucus, you know, that yeah. Senator Sweeney helped start with with Mm -hmm. both of our input, uh, I think that's really changed the mindset because it's sort of a black hole when you talk about manufacturing. We just assume that all this stuff came from somewhere. We just don't know where. So I I think it's a, we're doing a better job. Uh, I'm biased, so Mm -hmm. are we, are we investing enough? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. Good, fair answer. Um, so a couple of month, months ago, uh, NJMEP hosted the first hosted the first of three State of the State 2021 events, uh, which brings together manufacturing leaders and uh, STEM firm executives and, le- and the legislature, elected officials. Um, 
first one was February 25th. Yeah. And um, at that first one, there was talk about off, offshore wind, uh, the project off the coast of Atlantic City. How much will that benefit manufacturing in the state if that comes to fruition, that project? Well, I think it's a great project. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the EDA especially has spearheaded and done really well with it. Right. Um, the concern for me as somebody in this industry and also as somebody that's been in New Jersey a long time, I always go back to uh, the school construction of, I don't know, you know, a few years back. Right. And a lot of that $8.4 billion that we spent disappeared out of the state. Yeah. You know, a lot of companies came in, set up shop for, you know, a year or so and then disappeared. And I'm excited about, you know, President Biden talking about made in USA and a lot of conversation now, especially with the uh, Manufacturing Caucus about made in New Jersey. We've got to focus on it. You know, we went through our database and we found over 1,400 companies that can probably make components for this offshore wind. Wow. Not, you know, not some of the big ones and obviously, but let's invest in that. Let's invest in the education of people so that they can do these things. You know, we need to be able to be the guys to not only supply stuff, I don't know what percentage, 25%. Mm -hmm. If it's multi-billions, that's a lot of money, yeah, right? Absolutely. Uh, but also, you know, how do we train up our union workers and our riggers and our construction people and our, you know, maintenance people and so on? This should be and could be a boon for New Jersey if we do it well. Um, and I think we can, mm -hmm. but the conversation has to continue. I, you know, when we talk about, you know, New York State and other states can, I want, I want New Jersey companies and New Jersey people to be able to go and help other states do this stuff. That would be the ultimate. And yeah. I think that was Governor <clears throat> Murphy's point. Yeah. We but, can lead. But we have to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. We can lead the, the market. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the virtual state of the state event. The next one that NJMEP is hosting is April 23rd from 10 a.m. to 8 a.m. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, serving the counties of Hunter and Mercer, Middlesex, Monmouth, Somerset and Union, and you can register at njmep.org, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, lastly, John, I just want to end on some good news. Uh, last week, Team Eagle Foundation presented M NJMEP with $25,000 to support the rebirth of the summer jobs program. So John, tell us what that is and why is it important to get uh, youth involved in uh, manufacturing? Well, it's a longer story than you probably want to hear. Oh, I got all day. Ah. Sounds good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, I, I, I worked with others to create Team Eagle Foundation mm -hmm. as a way to provide strategic mentoring for boys and girls in New Jersey, all New Jersey, 15 to 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And we had a camp program and it was really kind of cool. We did a lot of great things. We exposed them to opportunities uh, in careers, education, and so on. And it was really went well. We had over 330 people attend that camp wow. at no cost to them. Great. Then we also had some several scholarships and grant programs that we earned and gave out about a quarter of a million dollars, which was very exciting because we started this in my kitchen. Uh, but last year with COVID, right knocked the heck out of the Set program back. and we had money in the operations account and said what are we going to do with it well fast forward to this year and we were discussing exposing young people to the industry and about five or six years ago we started a experience manufacturing summer jobs program mm -hmm. not an internship program right just a summer jobs program Young people working for a manufacturer or a STEM company or a logistics company and getting paid to learn about that. And it really became a huge success and it took off. Wow. That was great, yeah. but I didn't have any money to, <laughs> to support it. So uh, this year, I, you know, we had that money. So with 25,000 and I went to my board and I said, can we match it? Mm -hmm. Now I know if we could, we had some money put away for this type sure. of stuff. So, so now we're going to invest $50,000 wow. in a program to help 
expose teenagers to to the industry right. and then maybe bring it you know a little bit further with some other cool events and stuff we used to do something at my leader program which was team eagle foundation it was a cardboard canoe race <laughs> and it got wet in the water in the water wow. 25 yards you had to build the, the canoe you had a team and stuff and we're thinking maybe we can bring that back as a competition right. for a school to, mm -hmm. you know, maybe get some type of grant or something right. through it. So it was 25 yards, you said? 25 yards. So I would have built a 25 yard length canoe. People, you only get two sheets <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and two rolls of duct tape. All right. Well, well, John, you're always doing great stuff for NJMEP. Um, thank you for what you do. And uh, thanks for being on uh, Minding Grizzlies. Come back anytime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Bye, Vinny. <laughs> Bye, Vinny. We'll be back right after this. You're first. First to respond. First to put others' lives before your own. And in an emergency, you need a network that puts you first, that connects you to technology and each other, that's built with and for first responders. FirstNet, the only officially authorized wireless network for first responders because putting you first is our job welcome back to njbia's minding your business i'm bob Considine. well our next guest has made a great name for herself as the owner of msi plumbing and remodeling and now she's taken on a new foray as the executive producer for her news uh, her son's new video project and thornton thank you so much for being here my pleasure thank you for having me all right so before we get into all the great stuff your son is doing you're doing with him um i wanted to get into msi plumbing and remodeling tell me the backstory about that how did this company start sure um well we've been in business almost 35 years 35 years long time wow. and we started out in property management doing uh managing condos and office buildings mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> Within a couple of months, someone says, hey, can you fix something? And you know, you hire your first carpenter, right. time marches on, and we still do property management, right. uh, full home remodeling, and then we added uh, licensed plumbing about 14 or 15 years ago. Right. And so we do you know, residential and small commercial, because we're based in Hunterdon County, mm -hmm. so we service Hunterdon, uh, Warren, and Somerset counties, right. basically. So was it a matter of when you, start, when you had this uh, condo association of it was kind of a means to get into plumbing because that was what people really needed, right? Was, you saw this almost as an opportunity. Cool. Oh, absolutely. Uh, each one of the trades was an opportunity for us. And we always wanted to uh, build into the business uh, a more professional trade mm -hmm. where you needed licenses and, and you know, people with uh, certain knowledge, et cetera. You get paid more for that. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah. And plus, it kept us very uh, engaged because right. we were all, at one point, we even owned a, uh, a landscape irrigation company. Wow. Uh, yeah. Installing, yeah, installing um, in ground sprinkler systems. And because we're in Hunterdon, my husband, who's also in this business, uh, became a professional, got all his licensing for irrigation. And we did horse suppression, dust suppression for horse farms. Oh. And those are big, big jobs. Oh, I yeah. mean, big yeah. jobs that you can do. So, you know, intricate designs in horse barns. And so, yeah, we were always looking to grow and something more technical mm -hmm. than becoming like a landscaper where you would hire maybe day people or something like that. We wanted something right. deeper. But MSI, MSI Plumbing and Remodeling is basically your company, correct? Oh yeah, I'm the majority owner. Right. Um, absolutely my company. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't want to take away. Yeah, any, yeah, yeah, no. Problem. And when the husband gets mentioned, sometimes yeah. there is that. He still owns and runs the property management mm -hmm. company um, because that business takes a lot more, um, what's the word? Uh, just a collective kind of management style yeah, where that's really not my style. Yeah. My style is like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. This is how we're going to get there. <laughs> and so I didn't last very long in the property management business right. and I'm not afraid to admit it. Mm -hmm. But um, when we started adding these trades and we said, mm, we need a separate company. Right. And that's when my job really started. So did you find, I don't want to use the word resistance, but maybe uh, a lack of acceptance from a, a woman starting a, a plumbing company, basically, 
you know, it's a male dominated mm, very uh, much. Uh, business. What, did that you did that occur to you? Um, it do, it did, and even still does sometimes. Really? Sure, mm. um, even within my own employee ranks, you know, mm. they may because I'm not the plumber, right. you know, and my job is to run the whole show. Right. So I depend on my licensed plumber to be the technical right whiz kid, not me. Mm. So I'm very good at at uh, letting people do what they do best. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's many times when I would have to say. You should be looking at me yeah, because right. you're talking to me, yeah. not him, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but my background before I was even in business, um, I have an undergraduate degree in special ed and a master's in vocational counseling. Wow. My goal was to be a principal of a vocational school. Mm-hmm. So I was always kind of around the trades in my educational background, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a natural progression to, you know, step into this role. Right. We met uh, a couple years ago, and I was able to get a, my paws on uh, your book. And uh-huh. it's called Ann Thornton's Insider Guide uh, to Home Improvement. And I found it to be, um, I've looked at it, and, uh, you know, my father uh, was a, f- a plumber himself. Oh. But I did not capture the plumbing gene. Yes. So what I found it was great, f- uh, a great uh, how-to, but also to kind of empower people to say, hey, you can do this. Um, you know, this is how your house works, basically. Was that the goal of the book? Sure, absolutely. And and for me, it was also very much written toward women. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of men who have no clue about their homes absolutely. as well. I certainly know that. But I've also seen a lot of women in my career really be taken advantage of by contractors. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to become a contractor. So you can have, you know, you throw a magnetic sign on right. your truck and you have a dog <laughs> riding shotgun, you yeah. know, you can be a contractor. Right. And the goal of the book, and you probably saw this, was um, I have a lot of vocabulary, the old teacher in me coming out. But part of it is I wanted to teach women and really anybody without any of the knowledge, some of those words yeah. so that you can converse with someone and they think, oh, she knows what she's, I'm talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to, you know, take advantage of this person possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, and also there's, there's information about how to hire a contractor, what, you, you know, you, what questions you should ask, what documents you should ask for, right. et cetera. Um, because if it sounds too good to be true, yeah, it probably is too good is. to be yeah. true. <laughs> Did you get a lot of good feedback? Oh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot. Yep. 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 Um, I've you, given that book away to hundreds of people. I know. I know. And, and I, I got the book out and I, I <laughs> got my notes. Like, uh, the importance of maintenance is huge in this in this field. Replace your washing machine hoses. That's a biggie. Clean your drains. Absolutely. Disgusting, but okay. They're and, gross. <laughs> and uh, replace your gate valves. Oh, with, with yes. Ball valves. The, with ball valves. Right, That's right. a big one. Right. Um, of course, most people don't even know the difference between a gate valve and a ball valve. But when you go to turn it off, and gate it, valve's a wheel. Yeah, it looks like a wagon wheel. And the uh, ball valve's like a lever. one lever. Yeah. Correct. Yep. See, Very good. You learned plan. something. Yeah, listen, the only thing I learned really a good flush beats a full house, <laughs> <laughs> except in clo- yeah. except in poker. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I wanted to let's get into your latest venture. Uh, it's called Thor's Outdoor Science Academy. Academy. Uh, tell us all about this. And this is a, a basically video segments that you're producing with your son. Correct. So I have two children, a daughter who is taking over my MSI business. Oh, and okay. without okay. her, I wouldn't be able to write to be freed up to, to do this. So when you have a boy and a girl, you you just kind of typically, oh, the boy's going to grow up and be in the, you know, kind of that sexist thought. Oh, right. the boy's going to be in MSI and the girl's going to whatever. Right. Right. Well, it was the complete opposite. Mm. Just like you without mm. the plumbing gene, right. my son was like, no. There's <laughs> only one thing he wanted to do his whole life and that was to be an archeologist. Mm-hmm. That was it. He started reading when he was like two or something and he's read a gazillion books, yeah. right? So my son came back from graduate school. He was at the University of Colorado mm-hmm. and uh, within a couple months got his dream job of being an outdoor educator mm-hmm. at uh, Pequest Fish Hatchery, right. which is up Division in Warren of Fish County. Fish and Wildlife for the state, right? Fish and Wildlife, mm-hmm. exactly. And while he was in college and grad school in Colorado, he worked as a tour guide at a dinosaur and geology yeah. museum. So he had literally spoken to a couple hundred thousand people over right. his eight years out there. And he's fantastic at it. Yeah. And everybody would say, you should have your own TV show. So he got his job and he got the job, notified that he got the job in February and the job was going to start on mm-hmm. April 1st or whatever. Of course, the job never started. COVID. COVID. Yeah. And so um, one day we were just talking, we we're like, maybe, you know, maybe now is the time to do, look at all this online learning, yeah. you know, and you're so good at it. And, and for the prior five years, I had been doing myself personally, MSI television 
yes. television commercials Absolutely. on um, Comcast mm -hmm. and Altice and the right. different big media, mm -hmm. you know, where I was yeah. on the camera and we were you know, selling MSI. Yeah. So I had learned a lot about TV production. Mm -hmm. And so we just basically sat down. And it's funny because the kids, when they were growing up, had a teenage babysitter who was who stayed close to us our whole lives. And mm -hmm. she ended up being a science teacher out in okay. California. And so she's our science advisor as well. So okay. she's, it's a real family right, right. thing going on here. And we just conceived it. Um, my last name is Thornton, right. and which is my maiden name. Yeah. And so my husband's last name is Geesey. Right. And we named our son Thornton John Geesey. Right, right. So that's how he can legitimately right. call himself Thor. Thor. Right. 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 Um, <laughs> I know, because you know, we called him TJ right. growing up, right. you know, the whole when he was growing up. I was often called Thor myself <laughs> growing up. But for, different for a different reason, reason. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. Um, so we, you know, we just kind of conceived this and started talking about it, thinking about it. How would it work? We should be doing this for the education market. Um, and because I knew it was going to take a lot of money mm -hmm. to invest in this, I yeah. thought, well, let's do a preliminary take. So I got a local yeah. photographer that I knew that like did a videography, pilot. a pilot mm -hmm. for just for us. Didn't even have a, I just wanted to see him on camera. I wanted mm -hmm. to see what it felt like, look like. So we wrote a show and we did that. I mean, he didn't have his hat. He didn't even have yeah. an outfit. He was sweating. It was yeah. the summer, right, right. you know, and uh, no makeup artist, no nothing. <laughs> but it was there. You could just see it. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to invest he's in this. He's a natural. He's, he's a natural. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's a natural. I've seen these clips too, and he is definitely a natural. Yeah. Very outgoing. Yeah. Uh, but I think the success here, if I have it right, uh, is the show the, the segments which he, you are producing mm -hmm. with him is now on a show that runs all over the country? That's correct for public television. Correct. What's the name of the show? It's called Into the Outdoors. Into the Outdoors, mm -hmm. Emmy, Emmy Award winning show. Yeah, been on the air for fifteen years. Wow. So what happened? We thought we were the first two shows we wrote, the Rock Cycle and the Water Cycle. We just kind of planned them to be 13, 12, 13 minutes long because mm -hmm. we just thought, okay, they're going to be in the education market. And there's this company that distributes, it's called infobase.com. It's awesome. It's like the largest provider of video material for s schools and colleges across mm -hmm. the country. And then I had a friend, um, his daughter, who was a journalist, who saw our stuff. And she's like, you know, I worked with this guy. <laughs> you know how it goes. I worked with this guy in Shreveport, Louisiana. But he went back home to Madison, Wisconsin to work in the family business. Right. And their family business is a big media company there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you send your stuff to him? So I sent it off to him. He looked at, he immediately got back to me and he was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing with this? Who is this? You're about, you know. And he loved it so much. He said, I'm getting ready to deliver 13 episodes, my next 13 episodes for PBS. Would you produce six, two and a half minute segments right. of Thor doing his thing? Right. And we'll add them on as an epilogue to six of those 13 shows. Right. You know, no money exchange, yeah. no nothing. Mm -hmm. He said, when the people see, you know, they're going to love it. Mm -hmm. I know it. I feel it in my bones. So hearing that from a professional like that, yeah. it said, okay, it's time to really invest in this. And that's when we pivoted. We, we created 10 because I wanted to give him, you know, yeah. you want to something overachieve, to from, right? something to choose from. Yeah. And he loved them all. And he said, listen, you're going to have a 30 minute TV show be before you know it. And I said, okay, well, in that case, I'm going to start producing them now. Yeah. So, you know, executive producing means also yeah. <laughs> this, <Yeah. laughs> as well as, mm -hmm. you know, we have a really great Conceding. entertainment lawyer. Yeah. I mean, it's important to have all your it's ducks a major in a row. Deal right here. It's a major deal yeah. that I'm waiting for somebody to give me yeah, <laughs> for right. my 30 minute show. Yeah. I just think it's neat, you know, how you kind of, Created something out of MSI through an opportunity. Basically, through an opportunity. An opportunity. And this is the same exact thing. An opportunity came about because he didn't get the job with the fish. Market. That's what we say. It's like such a great COVID success story yeah. that, you know, we were able to, but that's kind of how we've always been in our business is that we've always looked into the market. You know, we're out in Hunterdon County. It's pretty rural out there. Yeah. And certainly for the last 25 years, sure. it's, you know, a little more active now. But, you know, we were always looking for something new and and different to do to yeah. bring into our business mm -hmm. and having this opportunity is just it's really been incredible right. and so much fun yeah, it's like great. being in eighth grade science every day yeah, <laughs> well I would encourage people to look at and, and for both things here so let me give the uh, the plugs if I could MSI plumbing and remodeling is uh, oddly enough at MSI plumbing and remodeling.com 
And Thor's Outdoor Science Academy is at Thor's Outdoor Science Academy. Com, right. How did you come up with these? I ideas? know, isn't that a cra right. crazy? But uh, thank you, Ann. This is a great yeah, story, and we sure. appreciate uh, Ann Thornton for being here. And I appreciate NJBIA. You, there's a whole backstory about yeah. about how I met Michelle and yeah. got involved with you guys, which has been great. I mean, it's 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 meant a lot to me. Well, we appreciate you. Thanks. Being here. All right, and thank you all for joining us here on NJBIA's Mining Business, and we will see you next time.